And welcome back, this is Baller Scooper with more Let's Play Mass Effect 3. I'm joined as always by the Explorer-in-Chief, Mariah Shepard. When we last left off, we finished another Corian priority mission. I believe that is it for the Corian missions, at least in terms of the priority one. So, they want us to go back to the Citadel. Instead, we are going to go randomly exploring again. It just makes sense. So... I don't believe there's anything for me to scan in here. Like I said, I might have to start looking things up uh, to see that, uh, well, where I'm missing things because I feel like I'm still missing a few things here and there. So we will have to look at some point. Uh, the Hades Nexus, I believe is new. So let's head there. That'll be our first stop. Uh, two things should have opened up. There are at least a couple places that I know I need to go to. Uh, we will explore here last, uh, but it looks like Kerr might be the uh, terrestrial world here, if there is one. Uh, yes, it is, all right. A dry, desolate planet. Kerr is temperate, but supports little life above the microscopic level. It's Earth-like temperatures and gravity make it an appealing place to build habitation hideaways, attracting Batarian slavers and criminals who can't afford more luxurious safe houses on other planets. Its forgiving nitrogen-helium atmosphere makes EVAs possible with a minimal amount of equipment. A breathing mask and warm clothing is usually sufficient. Mining and other legitimate activities are few and far between on Kerr. The planet's crust is largely free of precious metals, instead producing kilometers upon kilometers of dolomitic limestone, calcite, and gypsum. Uh, Lions Bolt and Geth have been encountered in the Hecate system. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Uh, it's cold. It's, well, it's not that cold, but it's still cold. Uh, pressure's fine. Gravity's fine. I bet there's something here. I found something. Oh, it's on Asteria instead. Is there something interesting about Asteria? It is also a habitable planet. All right. A habitable planet known for its arid sulfurous deserts. Sulfurous deserts. Asteria is colonized near the poles to avoid the uncomfortable temperatures that can reach 65 degrees Celsius in more southern latitudes. While the seas contain primitive am animal life, little of it can live on land, leaving the soil to hardy plants that can survive in the extreme heat. Asteria is home to thriving human and Asari agrarian colonies, but little in the way of manufacturing or mining. Travel advisory. Carbon dioxide concentrations can reach 2,500 parts per million in... Asteria's atmosphere. Citizens should carry supplemental oxygen for children and the elderly. Consult with local governments to discuss animal companion detection systems or other pre pre preparatory, measures. preparatory me measures. Either way, Elias Bullets and Geth have been encountered in the system. All civilian traffic is prohibited. It was There was a colony founded in 2044. There's 188 million people here. The capital is Black Damp. And we're going to start the scanner because it's hot and everything else is relatively good. All right, over here somewhere. Like, I don't trust it when they point up. Ah, there it is. Way the hell up there. What do we have up here? Alliance frigate, Hong Kong. We got the Hong Kong, hooray. And we've updated the, the fifth fleet as a result of that. How much do I have in the system? That is 50% of it. It also looks like 50% of uh, the Reaper alertness, so we're going to move on without it. Uh, let's go to Sheol, and we'll head back. I'm at 14%, which means seven things total. Well, there's just the one planet here, Gay Hinnom. Let's call it that. Uh, yeah, all right. A nearly atmosphere... An atmosphere-less, tidally locked planet orbiting a red dwarf star, Gehinom was the first place human explorers discovered a dedicated Prothean burial ground. While a few sites were saved for posterity, Eldfell Ashland Mining successfully lobbied to scout the rest of the planet for Element Zero and soon was embroiled in a scandal. Mining teams were looting grave sites, searching for Ezo and other treasures, and many got rich off the so-called cemetery business. While EAM officially brought a stop to the looting, its mining teams remained on the planet, prospecting the unclaimed territory and taking their ore to the Pamyat system for refining. 
Uh, travel advisory, armed conflicts have broken out between miners and scientists staking claims to Prothean ruins. Visitors are advised to employ security while exploring unknown regions of the planet. Population 11,500. Uh, it's really hot and really cold, but there is like a temperate zone. I do have a question about it though. So if they're digging up what I assume are Prothean graves, right? This is, this is where Protheans were, and they're digging up grave sites. That means that they're digging up Protheans, right? How did we not know what Prothe Protheans looked like if we could get their skeletal structure? Yeah, no surprises there. All right, let's scan. See what I can find in here. Just straight to the right again. Unless they're making me go all the way around. A little bit up. Not too much, though. What do we have here? A Prothean Sphere! That's a new artifact for us that will be useful. And that's everything here. So let's leave. Uh, what am I at? 749? Alright, let's go to Pamyat. And looks like this would be the, uh, the habitable place. Uh, Dobrovolsky? Dobrovolsky? Something like that. Uh, no. Well, there's Izo here, but outside of that, that's it. But since there's Izo here... I found something. That's what I thought. And, like, all the Reapers are on to me. Just all of them. So, anywhere there's Izo, I'm pretty sure there's going to be something on the planet. I'm starting to get some idea of where I'm scanning. It's only, you know, the end of the game. Well, end of the scanning, but that's it. All right, Alliance Frigate Leipzig. Uh, that updates the first fleet. And that is 50% of the things here. Um... I'm gonna zoom here. Boom. Oh, I am starting to figure things out. 100 units of fuel. Well, I mean, that's enough for me to go to the next Faster area. Light jump successful. Let's go to hop loss. And then it'll be an easy trip back to Hakat or Hakate or Hakate or who knows. Uh, we have Trident here. That looks like it's, uh, yeah, a human world. A human dominated world with over 95% of its surface covered by salt water. Trident is home to a dazzling array of life. The oceans are filled with creatures ranging from tiny bivalves to mammoth vertebrates unequaled even by Earth's whales and ichthyosaurs. Small archipelagos create what little land there is, and its value, valuable real estate is fought over constantly. Underwater extraction operations have recovered a number of valuable minerals from the ocean floor, including iridium, uranium, and dust form element zero. A largely lawless world, Trident is home to a rogues gallery of unethical corporations, exploring the resources of the planet and actual rogues, criminals, slavers, and mercenaries work in the shadows. Travel advisory, due to extreme re weather condi conditions, all traffic to the surface is grounded. Trident Spaceport Control predicts this condition will persist until the end of hurricane season. Apparently it's hurricane season. I think we have been to Trident before. Founded in 2144, uh, there's 6.8 million people here. The capital is New Cousteau. Uh, they don't say anything about Reapers, but there are Reapers here. Um, yeah, it's dense, it's hot, but uh, gravity's pretty much fine. Signal confirmed. Oh, there was a thing way over here. All right, it's fuel, I'll take it. But I feel like there's uh, gonna be three things here. No, all right. Um, then the, the other thing's gotta be here. What's what's this copus here? It's a little moon here. Um, I don't know, it doesn't, doesn't look all that important, but I imagine that, yeah. <laughs> if there's a moon, that means there's something there. You know what I mean? All right, let's scan it. Reapers can wait, it's so weird. There we go. All taken care of. We got the Obelisk of Karza, another artifact for us. And we are good to go. Evasion successful. All right, let's go back to Hakate, whatever it's called. It's probably Hakate, because I feel like a lot of these are uh, like Greek sounding names. All right, so I've scanned something at Kerr. Let's start over here, and then kind of go around here. There it is. Investigate. We got ourselves 380 units of fuel. Almost back up to full. But then I can get the mass relay out, and that's it for the Hades Nexus. We are already done there. Um, 
Is this all done? Kite's nest, yeah, this all looks done to me. Uh, yeah, this Krogan DMZ is 100%, even though I couldn't necessarily read it all that well. All right, the Cillian Nebula is up next. I think there was a fuel station there. So we can get that 15 units of fuel that I so desperately need. All right, so 100% has been done here, but there's a hell of a lot more going on than I remember here. Okay, so I think this is all new. Apparently there are 11 things for me to find in total. We'll start with the Laropi. Uh, there's wreckage there. There's also a Saturn looking planet here called Paphos or Paphos. Um, is there anything interesting about it? There, there's not. It's They're talking about who it's named after, who's an Asari lawgiver. Uh, her treatise on the reluctance of democracies to go to war with other democracies formed a key tenet of Asari political theory that led to Thessia's modern golden age. Um, all right, it's probably not here. Wait, is there a planet right there? There is, this is Yacilium. It's a minor rock planet, but uh, they had stuff here and it was abandoned, something. so. Sometimes it does well to, to scan the, uh, the actual information on these places because they'll sometimes tell you whether there's going to be something there. This one was pretty obvious for me. All right, we got an Armali sniper unit. I'll take it. I don't know what it does, but I'll take it. Uh, I assume the other thing here is at the wreckage. Close to it. Gave me 300 units of fuel, which does put me back up to max. And then we can go, because we're done here. That's it for Loropi. Nahuala. Let's go there next. Okay. Pretty pretty clear which one's the garden world here. It's Hyan Hyatiana? Sure, Hyatiana. Hyatiana serves as a bastion of research for the Asari, boasting multiple observation outs outposts, glacial drilling stations, and educational institutions. While the planet's average temperature hovers near freezing, the equatorial band contains oceans and many freshwater rivers. Xenobiologists of all stripes often visited the planet, as its expansive facilities were a haven for the life sciences. Re the Reapers destroyed Hy Hyatiana. Hyatiana's, it's, it's weird, Hyatiana's spaceports and its uniformed defense forces. As with other Asari planets, the Reapers forced the heavily biotic population into surrender through threats of massive retaliation rather than assault by husks alone. Colony was founded in 735 CE. There's 119 million people here, or there were before the Reapers came. Capital is Port Lorama. Uh, it's kind of cold. Um, the... the Gravity and pressure a little high. But there's something here. Signal confirmed. You knew there had to be. All right, let's scan. Over to the left this time. Ah, kind of close that time. What do we get? We get the Ceres Guard. Does that update anything? Probably not. All right. Hmm. Is there anything... Wait. They're kind of like pointing something. All right, well, I'll take it. 250 units of fuel. Back up to max. And we're good to go. Next stop, Fontes. I'm going to try to go to Teolia. I think I can make it. All right, so <laughs> there's something going on here in Altan. Uh, we have Dakuna, though. That looks like the main planet. The Elcor homeworld, Dakuna, overflows with natural resources protected by law from large deposits of precious metals to vast forests. The Elcor themselves live in rich grasslands near the equator. The majority of Dakuna's settlements are tucked within this belt, as the conservative Elcor feel little desire to build outside their comfort zone. Their twin capitals are for migrations from the wet season to the dry season, a tradition made obsolete by modern technology, but still observed. Basically, they're elephants. 
that's what they're going for here. They're elephants. After the destruction of the Elkhorn Navy, Reapers moved in their ground troops to occupy the cities. This has taken longer than most civilized worlds, as the Elkhorn have spread out into smaller distant settlements, reflecting their preference for close-knit family communities instead of densely packed cities. There's 2.35 billion Elkhorn here, there were at least. The capitals are Seriun and Malvion. Malvuon? Sure. Uh, it's hot. The gravity is intense, but we kind of already knew that, uh, and the atmospheric pressure is kind of normal. I Boom. found something. We found two things, one here at Takuna and one on its moon, I assume, so we'll be going to the moon next. What do we have here? We got the Code of the Ancients. It's a new artifact for us. I'm getting a ton of artifacts lately. Uh, Oltan. Oltan. Uh, the first mission to Oltan to Kuna's moon was a century in the making. Elkhor leaders felt resources for space travel could be better used on their homeworld, and it took decades of persuasion to secure project funding. Archaic harvesting stations that recovered helium-3 from the moon's regolith were still functioning when the Reapers invaded, and the Elkhor stationed there were able to flee the station. Um, yeah, there's not too much going on here, but we will start the scanner! Way over here somewhere. There it is. Just like complete opposite side of the planet in the moon. Whatever. We have the Elfor Elcor Flotilla now on our side. And there's one more place for me to try to find something. Um, there it is. All right. I've been getting very lucky with my scans lately. 175 units of fuel puts me back up to max. And we're good to go. We got your stuff. Let's Faster head. Light jump successful. Let's head to Teolia. I'm not gonna really do anything better than this in terms of fuel, so hopefully we make it just fine. All right. So this looks like the world, the the garden world to me, but this one also could be something. All right. Yeah, this is definitely it. Nevos. First discovered by Asari pioneers in 430 CE, Nevos is a vibrant garden planet and home to a thriving Asari colony. Sandy beaches and romantic twin moons fuel a bustling tourism economy, while practical and secretive corporate matters are handled in spiraling arcologies built around towering cliffs. Even though it has been colonized for centuries, Nevos feels a frontier away from regulation and oversight. Consequently, a number of influential political lobbies have established sizable pre presences on the planet. Founded in 430 CE, there are 677 million people here. Uh, the capital is Estella. The gravity is a little high. Temperature is a little high. <laughs> Pressure is a little high. But uh, nothing too bad. Signal confirmed. Shocker, there's something here. Let's go ahead and scan. Down here somewhere. Not bad at all. We got the rings of a loon. I've been looking for that for a long time, haven't I? All right, that's some of the things here. I assume Loxia is another garden world. Um, they said it's a terrestrial planet. All right, Loxia is a small terrestrial planet, tidally locked to Teolia. Due to its low mass and relatively small size, Loxia has an exceptionally fast stellar orbit. The planet's light atmosphere consists mainly of argon and krypton, which occasionally produces long, thin bands of luminescence along with the twilight border. Along the twilight border, Loxia's crust is mainly igneous rock with wide salt flats and occasional deposits of potassium. That's not nearly as interesting as I was thinking it was going to be. Shit. Here? There is something here. All right. So this is Quiresia. Uh, there's apparently something here. Uh, fuel gathering and magnetic field discharge. There's uh, seven moons around it that form the necklace. A reference to the legendary jewel owned by the ancient Asari queen for which Corezia is named. It's, I don't know, it's just, just a gas giant with a ton of moons, right? So, let's see what we can find here. 10,000 credits. Well, I'll take it, but it's not really what I was hoping for. All right, so it's got to be somewhere down here. There it is. All right, let's investigate, get the fuel, and get the hell out of here. 375 units of fuel. Puts me back up to max. Let's go. We, we did all of it in one run. That's what you call a perfect run right there. 
did not anticipate that at all. But I will take it. Easily made it back. Apparently I am very good at the scanning lately. Alright, back up to Max Fuel. Let's see if there's anywhere else I need to go. Because I, I think that's it. And no, no. I think that is it. That's... That is not nearly what I was hoping for, but it looks like that's that's everything. So, um, let's go ahead and get back on board the ship uh, because there were a ton of war assets that I got and Man. artifacts. So we'll go here and then to uh, Liara's lab because there's a good chance that there's some things that I can upgrade there. And then we will head to the Citadel. Which is where I'm supposed to go anyway, right? War Terminal, we got quite a few things. So I'm up to 3,500 effective military strength. 71, 28 total. So that's awesome. We got the Elcor Flotilla. The Elcor Flotilla possesses a few cruisers and carriers, but its real value is troop transport. Because of their shape, the Elcor carry shoulder-mounted heavy weapons. VI run systems handle reloading, targeting, and ammunition selection. It is not unusual to see a troop of Elcor soldiers toting rocket launchers, chain guns, and other intimidating weapons on their back as if they weigh nothing at all. Uh, so that doesn't really describe their ships, but okay, I'll take it. Then we have updates to the Alliance because we got a couple things there. Uh, we got the first fleet. This was an update. Uh, there we go. The SSV Leipzig was the first Alliance frigate to field test the Thanix cannon, a compact version of a Reaper weapon developed after the Battle of the Citadel. The Leipzig's captain was so pleased with the results, she gave her unconditional recommendation that the Alliance begin mass producing the cannon as soon as possible. Uh, then there's the uh, chemical burns, but... I don't think that's something new. We got an update to the Alliance 5th Fleet as well. The original SSV Hong Kong was destroyed in the Battle of the Citadel when its captain threw her ship in front of a blast meant for a dreadnought. The ship's frame was later melted down and incorporated into the framework of a new frigate rebuilt as its successor. I think that's it for the update there. 